A lot of the times the way I start my creative process is by doing research. I'll just look at images around certain topics, sometimes in real archives like the New York Public Library Picture Collection, but sometimes I just do visual research related to my own interests to kind of spark creative ideas. I knew of John Savage, who's a kind of punk author and cultural critic from England, and when I heard about his book Teenage, I was really intrigued. And its premise was really unique. It, it, it argued that youth culture didn't begin in the 1950s with rockers and beatniks and rebel without a cause, but that it started much earlier. And his book starts um, in 1845. My film begins at the turn of the century. Teenage looks at youth culture in America, England, and Germany from 1900 up until 1945. It's really about the birth of youth culture and the emergence of teenagers as we know them today. I knew that it would be this kind of sweeping cultural history about the emergence of youth culture and teenagers. But I didn't want it to be a completely intellectual experience. I wanted to have a kind of emotional impact. And a big element in John's book is the biographies of unfamiliar kind of youth figures from history. Um, and those really inspired me. Um, and I decided to make four central characters to the film. Uh, the first is Brenda Dean Paul. She was one of England's bright young people, a kind of Lindsay Lohan figure of the 1920s. Um, the second character was Melita Mashman, a Hitler youth. Um, she wrote an incredible memoir called Account Rendered that discusses how joining Hitler felt like teenage rebellion to her um, uh, in the 1930s. Uh, and then we have the character Tommy Scheel. He was one of Hamburg's swing kids. And he smuggled in American swing music and British fashion to rebel against the Nazi regime during World War II. And finally we have Warren Wall, who's an African-American Boy Scout in the 1940s. So the way I brought these stories to life is pretty unconventional. I shot my own archival footage um, in the style of 1920s, 30s, and 40s home movies. Um, so this footage that I shot, this kind of fake archival, um, it mixes in seamlessly with real archival footage of these people's kind of time and place. When I started making Teenage, I thought it would be kind of a deeper exploration of pop culture, but as I started grappling with the material, it became much more political than I ever anticipated. What I saw was the beginning of a full-fledged youth movement um, where young people were fighting incredible oppression from their parents, their governments and regimes, and struggling to be treated like equals. And after finishing the film, I feel like the youth movement and the kind of struggle of youth to be recognized and heard should be looked, looked at alongside other civil rights struggles. Johnny and 200,000 other youngsters who are arrested each year are America's number one crime problem. Golly, what do you suppose is going to happen to us now? My first feature film was called Wild Combination, and it was a portrait film about a musician named Arthur Russell, who was an avant-garde cellist and disco producer in New York um, in the 1970s, up until his death from AIDS in the early 90s. What was unique about that film is that there was almost no documentation of Arthur performing, and there was almost no um, even audio material of him speaking. So he was this big kind of absent presence from the film, and I had to use a lot of creative filmmaking tools to bring him to life. Um, I shot recreations on VHS cameras that showed him listening to mixes of his own cassette tapes on the Staten Island Ferry. Uh, in a sense, I was kind of tracing his footsteps in New York and the, the places he would kind of inhabit, but from a different time. I remember the pale green tint of Coca-Cola bottles. I remember not really trusting mincemeat pie, what was in it, and dressing too. I remember the way cranberry sauce slides out of the can. I remember is one of my favorite kind of written pieces ever. It's just a list of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of memories that this artist and poet Joe Brainerd had from his childhood up through his adult life. So I met up with his friend Ron Paget, the poet and um, came up with this idea to kind of bring the poem to life visually. It's a mix of the kind of vintage Americana that is rendered in Joe's poem, and then actual artifacts from their friendship and their life together. And in a way, I think of it as a kind of bridge between Wild Combination and Teenage, because 
It is a portrait of another queer artist who died of AIDS and a kind of forgotten figure. But it's also, um, it's also a text that is all about uh, adolescence and youth and kind of fleeting um, experiences of being young. And the film is a kind of conversation between these two sources and, a, and in a way a kind of simulated conversation between these two friends. To pay the bills, I, I do commercial work or work for hire. I mean, you can't really make a living making films about dead gay heroes and teenagers from the 1920s and 30s. And one of the cool kind of assignments I had is to make a cell phone movie for Nokia. Filmmaker Magazine commissioned it. And at the time, I was really inspired by the landscape of South Florida, specifically around Boca Raton and Boynton Beach, where my grandmother was living. And so I flew down there and just made a kind of experimental film with her on a Nokia cell phone. What started as an assignment turned into a real creative opportunity for me. And the hope is that that always happens, in a sense. I'm very much someone who likes to engage in all the different social media platforms because I see it as kind of an enduring form of youth culture and a continuation of the ways that I express myself more offline as a teenager. Isn't it true that all teenagers love to find things from the past that feel like a complete discovery and then to pick and choose aspects of that and, and to re-scramble it into something new? But in the kind of contemporary vocabulary, on Pinterest and Instagram and on Flickr and Tumblr, and although the stories of teenage take place in the past, it's our hope that they inspire a conversation about youth today and about some themes, conflicts, and ideas that will never go away.